Welcome to the Senior Voices Talk Show. I'm your host, Maricela Ferguson. Have you ever wondered when you hear the uh, fire department alarm go off, have you ever wondered where the fire truck goes or when it's coming back or exactly what happened? You wanna get a kind of a sneak peek as to what happens in the fire department. Well, today I have a guest, Captain Plone from the uh, Rialto Fire Department uh, as our special guest. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Maricela. Well, I'm very glad that you're here and I have some questions. I, I want to start first, how did you become interested in, in uh, fire, uh, being a, a fireman? Well, um, with me and my, my own personal case, I don't have a history of family members or friends in the fire service. Oh. Um, I literally was driving home from my old warehouse job when I was 23 years old and I saw a sticker on the back of someone's truck on the freeway. And I thought to myself, there's a certain amount of pride that that person has to put that sticker on the back window of their truck to announce to everybody not only their profession or, or what they do, but also where that department work, where oh. they work. Right, right. So I was really intrigued by that. I thought, uh, you know, I was working in a warehouse and I wanted to do more than be inside of a warehouse. So. I went to the local fire station that I was living at at the time and asked, what do I got to do to become a fireman? And they gave me some direction to take some classes at a um, junior college. I took those classes, went to the fire academy, and I wound up getting hired in the, my hometown, the city that I grew up in. So I've been here working for Rialto for 13 years now. And Rialto is your hometown? Hometown. Oh, whoop, yeah. whoop. That's Eisenhower, awesome. Eisenhower graduate. No way. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. That is fantastic. You know, it's really nice when you... Uh, meet someone and they're homegrown. Mm -hmm. So you know what? That's that. That is really awesome. Now, as a as a fireman, I have to ask you: um, Have you ever had, um, you know, a personal satisfaction e event that has happened while you're out there? Uh, uh, that pretty much happens every day. So, oh. uh, in 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 what we do in our line of work, when you call the fire department, typically it's the worst time of your life, whether it be a sick family member or you're involved in a car accident, True. Or, or your house is burning or on fire, that typically for you to call 911 and have the fire department respond to your house most times is the worst day in your life. And so what we bring not only in our skills and training uh, to help um, make the situation better, um, but we've done it so much and so often that we could bring a calming presence to that family or that person that's in need. Um, just to let them know that we're here to help and we're right, going to make the right. situation better. And you know what, and calming is is huge because you're right, I think calling an ambulance has to be, yeah, the worst, Absolutely. the worst, yeah, the worst day, the worst experience ever. And you need to have that person say, it's it's going to be okay, even when they're thinking, oh wow, this is this is uh, huge, this is, this is serious. I, I wanted to ask you also now, um, the fire department, how do they reach out to the community? Um, this is a senior voices, of course, the seniors, you know, are, are going to be listening. Of course. Yeah. So uh, what, anything with the seniors? Uh, well, we do a lot of things with the, the whole community. Abs um, right, right. Uh, some of those things include, we have a drowning prevention program. So every year we go and we speak to every uh, first grade class and uh, we read to them about uh, drowning prevention and safety in, in the pools. We also go to every high school senior, I know it's a different type of senior, but we yes. go to every high school senior and we teach them hands-only CPR. So that's something that they can go uh, right. in, into their regular life knowing. Right. I, I um, just want to make sure that I, I'm clear on that. So um, we go to every uh, high school? Every high school in the city of Rialto. Every high school in the city of Rialto. Yep and we teach them hands-only CPR to all the high school seniors. The so high school seniors. That's Carter, Eisenhower, Rialto, and Myler. We go to all of them and, right, and, right. and teach them all CPR. Right. Is um, that a one session or is that like maybe two or three visits? Uh, is it done through an elective class or? No, it's, it, they, they the rotate e? the kids through. Um, uh, all, we go one day, but we're there all day and we rotate all the high school seniors through so they can get the training. Um, That's huge. Yeah, uh, some other community involvement that we have is we do an open house every October and we invite the, all the community to come to our downtown fire station. They get to take a look at um, our fire apparatus, our engines and trucks. We have a bunch of events set up and booths set right. up and uh, stuff for the kids, um, stuff for seniors. Um, we promote um, our ambulance subscription. So if seniors that uh, have a problem, um, maybe they think they're scared of that, that ambulance bill you could subscribe to an, oh. a, an ambulance service that's uh, billed to your water bill 
and it's 60 bucks a year and it's just attached to your water bill and it can be attached monthly and with that ambulance service if you do need to be transported to the hospital it's already covered in the ambulance subscription so it's, that you it's have. approximately sixty dollars it's attached to the water bill yeah, absolutely sixty dollars for the year absolutely oh wow i wonder how many seniors i did i'm, I'm a senior mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's real I think. Um, uh, yeah, I'm a senior. I didn't know that. So, yeah. so it's attached to your bill. And where does the ambulance take them? Or, you know, is it? So the ambulance takes them where, where depending on what the situation is, um, but and depending on what their insurance is, we could take them wherever they want. Okay. But that's if it's what a, I was going to ask you. But so let's say you, if you were a Kaiser member, or if you were a Dignity Health member, and you wanted to go to Community um, Hospital of San Bernardino or St. Bernardine's in San Bernardino, we could take you there. Um, if you're a veteran, we could take you to the VA in Loma Linda. Um, so depending on, but also it depends on what the situation is. There might be a situation where you need to go to a specialty facility. Right. Let's say you were having a cardiac event, a heart attack, and you needed to go to a STEMI center, somewhere that can right. provide. Right, specialty. Exactly. Then we can take you to either St. B's or Loma Linda, depending right, on right. what that event is. If right. it was a trauma, if you fell or in Fire. a car accident, or, or if you were burned, then yeah. we would take you to Arrowhead because it's a burn unit. So, oh my gosh, that's um, wonderful. We're absolutely patient advocates. We're going to do whatever it is we can do to best help that particular patient. So wonderful. if it's a matter of it, they can go to any hospital of their, of their choice, depending on whatever kind of medical mm -hmm, event mm -hmm. they're having, they absolutely would be happy to wow. take you to that Well, the ambulance facility. is definitely a plus. And wow. Rialto has our own ambulances. Rialto is unique in the sense that uh, a lot of cities around ha here contract with a private ambulance company, which is uh, American Medical Response, or AMR. Right. The city of Rialto, we have our own ambulances. So you get a, re a Rialto employee in a Rialto ambulance that's going to transport you to right. wherever it is. And is that employee, does it come out of the fire department? Does uh, yep. Uh, we have fire that's department employees <laughs> on our ambulance. Wow. Mm. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have a specialty? I do. Uh, I'm a public information officer, or PIO. Oh, okay. So uh, I speak and, 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 and do some community events um, to, as a representative of the fire department and also big events that we have in the city where there might be some media attention. Um, I'd be the one to go talk to the media and to, while we, the incident was going on. I'm also an arson investigator, so I investigate fires and um, mm -hmm. assist with uh, our arson unit. I know the police department does like undercover work, but do you guys ever do undercover work in terms of trying to find someone who might be like an arsonist or? Um we sure do. Our, um, our arson unit, um, our arson investigators, okay, so we have nine have of them it. in the city of Rialto and they are peace officers and they can operate as a peace officer uh, if they're doing an investigation or looking for a suspect oh, okay. or um, uh, trying to find an arsonist, yes. If you were going to give uh, seniors some tips, because we have seniors out there that I hear when I'm listening to them and visiting them, they tell me some things and I'm like, oh, I don't know if that is a wise idea. What are some uh, fire safety tips that you would give a senior? Um, so fire safety tips, I, I want to kind of combine both fire mm -hmm. safety with just some general uh, safety tips for, for anyone, including especially seniors though, because as you get older, you might not uh, be able to stay on your feet as well. So uh, making sure that you have uh, a hallways or pathways in your house and free of clutter because we, we do end up right. going on a lot of calls where seniors have, have fallen down Slip either because they tripped over something mm -hmm. or uh, they, they got their foot tangled up on a, a floor rug or something yeah. like that. So to help those seniors stay on their feet, uh, definitely clear your hallways. Right. Uh, if you need to remove some of those area rugs that you end up getting yeah, caught up rugs, on. The cords. Or, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, cords. You see that. Uh, that's pretty oh, common. Goodness. Um, but also, um, a big thing that we run into when we go on calls for medical aids with seniors is um, they may not be as organized with their medications as they should be. Oh. And so one thing that they, they can do as well to help the firefighters and paramedics when they come to their house mm -hmm. for service is by having a list of all their medications, a current list. Wow. Because a lot of, you know, a lot of seniors use those um, those pill yeah, and they flip the exactly yeah, so <laughs> the we containers. ask them hey what what medications are you taking and Don't they know. and they show us oh <laughs> it's in the that container for Monday Tuesday Wednesday <laughs> the problem is is we look at pills and all we see is pills we don't know exactly right. what they are so if they're going to have something like that if they could uh, have a list of what those medications right. are and the dosages so we could have that and take that to the hospital when we transport them right that's very wonderful um, uh, another question I have for you what about uh, fires in other cities? Uh, have you ever, I mean, can the city, can our fire department go to another city to help out or 
Is that a no? That's a great question, uh, and the answer is yes. We're, uh, California has a, a mutual aid system in place oh, okay. where we help our neighbors and our neighbors help us. Mm. So there are instances where we will go out to help other cities in need, and mm -hmm. there's times where we have other cities and other departments come help us when we are in need. Mm -hmm. For example, up off of Sierra and um, Riverside Avenue, we oh. had a couple brush fires up in that area, okay. but we had mutual aid in place where we had units from Cal Fire, San Bernardino County, Ranch, Cucamonga, Colton, they all came to help us, but in that same, in that same breath, we also go to those other right. cities and, and counties to help them as well. Well, it's good to know about the partnering because, you know, sometimes I, I wonder, and I know that um, being a fireman is not, uh, even though it's very rewarding, I know that it can be uh, dangerous, and uh, I want you, to, can you tell me, because I know that the fire department, it seems like they don't try to, they're pretty uh, modest, humble, they try not to bring a lot of attention to themselves, but can you tell me of, uh, of one more good guy um, uh, event that you might, uh, or activity that the fire department's involved in? Uh, sure, I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm a Rialto firefighter, and uh, one of those reasons that I am so proud is um, we care about our community. When, when we say that we're, your Real, we're yeah. your Rialto firefighters, we really are your Rialto Thank firefighters. You. And so there have been a couple of incidents where, for example, we had a senior in the summer months that called us out for general weakness, wasn't feeling good at all, no mm -hmm. energy, no appetite, Fatigue. she was dehydrated. And oh we goodness. get to her home and it was really, really warm inside of her house. And um, we asked her why she wasn't using her air conditioner. And she explained to us that she lives by herself and her air conditioner is broke. Mm. And so not only did we take care of her and transport her to the hospital and get the care she needed to get, get her well again, but we took it upon our own selves and took money out of our own pockets to repair her air conditioner that's ourselves. What that's what I'm so talking the, about. We care about our community. We care about mm -hmm. the citizens that, that, that live in Rialto. We care most definitely about our senior citizens. They're not forgotten. <laughs> They're not in the shadows. We know exactly who they are, and we, and we try and help them out the best that right. we can. Yeah, well, you know what? I have to tell you, I believe it, because as I was uh, sharing with you earlier, about a month or so ago, I was at the fire uh, department for uh, a different reason, I think it was Fire Station 3, mm -hmm. and I saw a group of young young people, they looked like high school students, maybe a little older, but I, I had some questions, and I mean, right away, the uh, fireman said, oh, well, you know what, let me refer you to, you know, and he gave me the name of a, another person. I said, oh, my God, that's wonderful. I took a little note down, and then last week again, I uh, was there trying to follow up, because mm -hmm. I think I had gotten the email address wrong and they said oh you know what well he's right out there right now let me go get him they stopped what what they were doing went out there brought him back he gave me some information and that's how we were able to connect with you exactly. so so I yeah I, I I think it's wonderful that we have um, uh, people in the fire department who do they go above and beyond and I, I, I just think that's uh, I just think it's huge speaking of that though and being modest, and I'm sure a lot of folks don't even realize that you guys do things like this. Um, do you ever have, a, do you have a program, or a, an awards, a gala? Do you ever celebrate the firemen once a year or anything like that? We do. Um, we have an award every year that's voted on by uh, our peers. So it's, oh, okay. it's everybody in, inside the fire department vote on this and we vote for a firefighter of the year. And um, this is a tradition in our fire service that's gone on for a very, very long time. And each year we crown a new firefighter of the year for the next year. This year, our firefighter of the year is engineer Earl Meredith. Very, oh. very proud of him and what he's done and accomplished in, within uh, the city and the, what he's done for the community as well. Okay, and is it a celebration that it's just among you or can the community come out and cheer you on or? Uh, typically, we kind of we roll our celebration of our firefighter of the year with our badge pinning ceremony. So what we do is we have a badge oh. pinning ceremony to celebrate not only new employees that we've hired within mm -hmm. since the last badge pinning ceremony, but we also celebrate those that have promoted up the ranks in the fire service within Rialto Fire. And, and then we also recognize the, the firefighter of the year at that, at that point in time. Wow. Most times we've had it at uh, the Rialto Senior Center um, it, which has been a great venue for um, our batch it. pinning ceremonies. And um, uh, we haven't determined the date or time or place, 
but uh, certainly if members of the public would like to come, we could. Uh, it, it is open to the public for them okay. to come. Well, I hope that you'll keep me posted. I and will. Um, Captain, will you come back? Absolutely. Thank you so Anytime. much. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you so very You're welcome. much. You're Thank welcome. You. What an enlightening interview. I, I learned things that I, I didn't know, and I hope that you did too. A reminder to seniors, our Rialto Fire Department is here for us. Until the next time, I'm Maricela Ferguson with Senior Voices.